Hi everyone, Professor Bergasser here. We're at our next fifth video in the specs reduction uh, uh, tutorial. And this is the, I think, most interesting part where we're going to correct for the telluric absorption that appears in the atmospheres, uh, sorry, the atmosphere of our atmosphere, that's what we call telluric, it's, it's Earth-based, and that imprints on the spectra of the stars we're looking at. And we're going to correct for that using our calibrator stars so that we get a good estimate of what the spectrum of the star actually is where it's out there in space. So here's the things that we're going to be going through uh, today. We're going to look at how to identify which files to, com to, to combine, the source and standard files. We're going to look at how to get the B and V magnitudes, photometric magnitudes for our standard. We use that to make sure that the model for the star is correct. We're going to do uh, the step of uh, computing the convolution kernel, which tells us how the uh, instrument kind of broadens out the wavelength resolution. We're going to construct our total spectrum to correct our science target. We're going to do a little shifting of the spectrum just to make sure it lines up correctly. And then we're going to finish up with our final science grade spectrum. This is the thing that we're actually going to do the analysis with. So we're really at the end of the stage here. All right. So just again, reminder, we're looking at this set of data uh, from 2003. And we're going to be combining these two sources, our science target here, which we've already combined into one spectrum, and our standard star here. Now, how do I know this is standard star? Well, part of it is, again, looking at the integration time. It's very short, which means this is a bright source. But the other thing we can do is we can actually put in the coordinates here. So I'm going to copy these two numbers, values here. And then we're going to go to that Sinbad page. We mentioned that one of the web pages you want to bring up is that page on Sinbad. I'm going to copy those coordinates there. And sometimes it doesn't like tabs, so I'm just going to change that into a space. And press Enter. And it's going to search for all the stars within that region. There's only one, and it is indeed the star that is labeled in our log sheet, HD 101060. And uh, there's a few things to notice on this page. It gives us the actual coordinates of the star. It tells us some things about how the star is moving. That's what proper motion's rate of velocity means. Parallax tells us the distance. The key things that we want to know are these three numbers right here. The spectral type, and uh, notice that this is A0V. This is the standard spectral type we use for calibrating our, our stellar science data. Asteroid data typically has a different standard, and we'll talk about that in a separate video. But when we do stellar spectra, we use an A0 star because those stars are both very bright, but they also have very few features in their spectra. And so any features we see is really coming from the telluric absorption. And just to kind of emphasize that, let me bring up the um, quickly bring up the window in our ComSpec uh, spectrum. So let me just uh, get into my folder here, bash and IDL. Um, one of the helpful functions that comes along with specs tool is this thing called xvspec. It's to visualize the spectra. And if I load in from the proc folder, the combined spectrum 9 through 14, that was my combined A0 star spectrum, right? Hopefully that looks familiar. I'm going to plot over this the telluric plot atmosphere. That's our atmosphere. And you can see that a lot of the structure we see here is mostly from our atmosphere. There's some other structure from the star itself. There are a few features in there, particularly hydrogen lines. But most of this is coming from the atmosphere of our planet. So we want to correct for that. And that's kind of the goal here. So first of all, we confirm that this is an A0 star. And we also can find the magnitudes, B and V magnitudes of the star. Uh, and that's how bright it is at these two blue and visual bands. We're going to need that data for our uh, analysis. All right, so let's bring up the package that does this total correction. It's called XTEL Core. And you can see it brings up a new window here. And first, we want to put in our two spectra. In the standard spectra, as I mentioned, we know it's a standard star because it's an A0 star. That's what was closest to our target. So that's the spectrum we want to put in here. So again, it's in our proc folder, 9 through 14. Oops, wrong one. 14. Our object spectrum is the first one, 1 through 8. And then it's asking for the standard magnitudes, B and B, and that's what's listed here. So if I put in those values, 8.77 and 8.78, I load it up and we're ready to go. Now, this band at the top here gives us a little information about the difference in air mass between the standard and the target. And air mass is a measure of essentially how far from vertical the star is being observed. And it's called air mass because you're actually literally looking through some amount of air, some mass of air as you're going through different angles. And the closer you are to the horizon, the more air you're looking at, which means the more absorption from our atmosphere there's going to be. So you want to make sure that the standard and the target are very close in air mass because you're looking at the same amount of air. Now, 
you don't have any control of this because the observations were taken as they were taken. But if you have a choice between different standards, you want to choose the one that is closest in time to the science target and closest in air mass. That's going to give you the best correction. All right. This next step is constructing a convolution kernel. And this is how the instrument essentially changes the spectral resolution of the star. It's a finite size instrument, has finite resolution. And there's some way that it basically convolves the light with a sort of resolution sensitivity profile. Um, we don't need to know too much about that. Only thing we need to know for the prism mode is we just select this to IP and it's gonna use the arc lamp spectra to determine that convolution. So that's all you gotta do. Just do that and click on construct kernel. Next step is probably the most complicated one. We're actually gonna actually make sure we correct the, uh, conform the Tuller spectrum. We have to make some corrections because the model that we're using for our standard star. And again, if we know what the standard star is supposed to look like and we observe it, the ratio of that is what the, our atmosphere does. That's the Tuller spectrum. But our model may not be perfect. So we're gonna do a little bit of uh, finagling to make sure that we get this spectrum in the right place. So the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna click on scale lines. And it brings up this window here. And it's this top panel has all these different little green uh, boxes that we're going to drag up and down to basically correct for the strength of the hydrogen lines in our model spectrum to make sure that we're getting the best fit to the star. Now, this is a little bit complicated, so I'm going to go through this a little bit more slowly here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, zoom in on the rightmost of these lines right here. It's a little hard to see, but that's this bracket gamma. I'm going to zoom in on that with my Z key and then making a box. And what you can see is that there's a little structure here. Um, and around this line, there seems to be kind of an up and down. What that means is that it's not exactly centered. The model is not exactly centered on the source. So the first thing I always do is I just make some adjustments to the B shift, the velocity shift. Now, these are not real velocities. This is really just correcting the essentially the wavelength calibration so it matches the data correctly. So it's pretty big numbers. I'm going to start with 50. And notice that things flattened out a little bit, which means we're getting closer to aligning the model with the actual data. But I think we can go more. So do 100. I'll try 150. Let me try 200. That looks pretty close. So maybe 250. Looks like we've gone a little bit too far. So I'm going to stick with 200. Now, this should be flat. And it's not exactly. Uh, which means that maybe the model has a different hydrogen strength than the actual star. So one way we can fix that is, is we can do an automatic correction using the E key. So if I type E on my keyboard and I click on the left and right of this line, notice that this part went up a little bit and this got a little closer to flat. Now it's never going to be perfect, but this is a little bit better correction than it had before. Before we had kind of a weird wave. Now we have pretty close to flat, not quite. You can always, if you want to play with it more, you can drag this up a little bit more, up and down. It actually looks a little bit better. Um, you don't want to go too far because, you know, then it'll overcorrect. Actually, that's not too bad. Um, but that's kind of, you want to make this as flat as possible. All right. So that's one line. So now I'm going to click on the W key to get a wide view. And I'm going to zoom in onto this region, which is the H band part of the spectrum. And you can see there's quite a few lines labeled here. And many of them correspond to positive uh, little bumps on the spectrum, which again should not be there. They should be pretty flat. Uh, there's also a couple of negative bumps. This is actually absorption from our atmosphere. So this is a complicated region because we have both these H lines, hydrogen lines, and also telluric absorption. So I'm again going to use the E key for the ones that are far away from the absorption. And by the way, you can tell what's absorption because the yellow line here is our atmosphere absorption. So you can see these little two bumps correspond to these two little bumps. But unfortunately, there's also hydrogen lines in the way. So let me start on the right here. I'm going to use that E key again to try to correct for this one. And notice that it brought that line down. I'll do it again for this one, and I'll do it again for this one. So that's pretty flat. It's not too bad. For these other ones, I tend to just kind of do this manually. And I try to get it so it makes kind of a smooth return back to the top. And um, you know, I can tell that's probably the case because, for example, these lines don't really have any corrections to them. And that's partly because they're very weak lines, so they don't really show up in the spectrum anyways. So, you know, I've kind of hand corrected these other ones so that I get kind of a smooth uh, trajectory through here. And again, to make this as flat as possible. 
And I'll emphasize again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna just kind of level this off as much as possible because this helps make the correction as, you know, just on the telluric absorption, not uh, for any residual features in the A-star, basically adjusting the model so it fits right. All right, so that's not bad. You kind of see the general picture. You'll see something like this very often when you do these corrections, so you'll get used to the pattern. If I go to this other range, I usually avoid the rest of these lines. Um, you know, this one may be a little bit, I might bring down just a little bit, but it's, you know, harder to see where, you know, there's not really much in the way of absorption from these other lines. And so they tend not to be a big issue. So even if you just correct this one line at K band and these few lines at H band, that's probably going to be good enough. All right. So you can kind of see the pattern here. And again, all this is doing is just modifying the model, particularly these hydrogen lines, so that we can get the best reproduction of what the star is supposed to look like. And we have to do this because every one of these stars is a little bit different. So that's why these, these lines, these models are not perfect. So once you're happy with that, you just click on accept and construct to learn from spectra. And we're done with that box. And that was the hardest part, by the way. So congratulations <laughs> on getting through that. All right, our next part is that we're gonna just, one more adjustment to the model. Uh, if we observe our A star over here and we observe our science star over here, um, the instrument might actually shift around a little bit between those two times. And so the model to correct the telluric spectrum may not exactly line up with the science spectrum. So to fix that, we click on this determine shift box. We click on get shift here. And what you're looking for is a part of the spectrum that has a very strong uh, change in absorption. And that change in absorption from the, from the atmosphere. So this yellow line again is our atmospheric absorption. And we're looking for a region that has kind of very sharp features. So uh, one reason I like to use for this example is right here, you can see this kind of up and down happening. And if those get out of alignment, they'll have a pretty big effect on the resulting spectrum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the S key, select on the left side and right side of these features. And then I'm gonna do auto find. And I want you to watch what happens down here in the lower panel in that region. It's gonna essentially offset the spectra and kind of find the best place where they line up. So you can see it starts off pretty off misaligned, kind of finds a happy place and then it gets aligned the wrong way. And then it figures out what's the best match up there, all right? So it actually doesn't look very different from our original plot. So it looks like we were pretty close to alignment originally, but this is a good way to just kind of make sure that we are as close as possible and get the best correction for a alert absorption. All right, so once you're happy with that, you can click accept again. And now you're done. So all you have to do is now put in the uh, name of the file. And our naming convention is specs-prism, that's the instrument, and then the name of the source. And what we use is the, uh, if they don't have it in the source name, you wanna use J, which stands for J2000, which is a particular coordinate system. And then the first two numbers, two sets of numbers from the RA and the first two sets of numbers from the declination, uh, which is actually how the source is named here. So I'm going to, uh, Back to my window here. So I'm going to give that name J1104. Oops. J1104 plus 1959. Another underscore. And now we want to put in the date. And the date will be 2003-0521, just like we've been using. And I like to save everything we have. So I'll click on the model there, write the file. And now what we have is the final science ready spectrum for our source. This is a fully reduced spectrum. This is something that we can actually do some interesting science with, classify it, figure out what its properties are. We've gotten rid of all of the Earth's effects, all the instrument effects, and this is what we can do our science on. And by the way, this shows up in your uh, folder here. It changes the list view, right? Uh, there it is saved. Oops, there we go. There it is saved down at the bottom although you can't see the entire file name here, but one of these is the actual FITS file. The other two are the model and tiller correction that we saved as well. Um, but this is, the, this is the data we want. And so now we're ready to, to add that to our library and do some science with it. All right, so uh, that's the end of sort of our normal extraction. We're gonna have one more video to kind of show a couple more variants on this XTEL core uh, when we have uh, one standard for multiple stars or we're using an asteroid where we have a different kind of standard. So that will be our last video. But if you're just doing stellar spectra, you've gotten through all the steps and now you're ready to go and extract all of your night's data 
and get all these wonderful science vector out. All right, see you next time.